So how do we graph polynomials? And uh, to do this, I basically do a four-step process. We have to first describe the end behavior, get the type of polynomial. That's what we call that lead coefficient test. We have to find the roots, including that multiplicity that we just talked about, the y-intercept, and then we sketch it. So let's take a look at an example. Now, the most important thing to remember, these must be factored, okay? They must be in factor form, okay? And that's going to become very important for us later on. So if I look at the first one, i got to get the type, okay? Getting the type is very simple. If with each factor, we look at the highest degree. The first one, this first factor, is just 2x to the first. Here we have x, but it's going to be cubed eventually, so it's x cubed. Here we have another x, but it's squared, and here we have an x to the first. Simplifying it, we get 2x to the 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. That tells me it is odd, but 2 is positive, so it's odd positive. So what does that tell me? On the left side, it has to go down, and the right side, it goes up. It's going to make it look like our cubic. Starts down, ends up. Starts down, ends up. Next, we get the roots. Well, to get the roots, since it's already factored form, easy breezy, set each factor to zero. Don't forget multiplicity. Here, 2x gives me the root x equals 0. x minus 3, you got it. We get x equals 3, but that's m3. x equals negative 2, m2, because multiplicity. There's two of them. And x equals 1. Last, we need our y-intercept. To do that, just let x equal 0. If we let x equal 0, I guess I should write it this way, f of 0 we get 0 times negative 3 cubed, 2 squared, negative 1, which is just 0 again. So if I graph this now, we can sketch it, looking at the graph. Graph your roots first, 0, 3, but remember that's m3, so I'm going to write it. Negative 2, that's m2, so I write it, and at 1. And the y-intercept already graphed. How nice is that? So, this my uh, the type now tells me it starts down but ends going up. So when I start at negative, I'm going to go down. I'm going to go to the root. It starts below the y-axis, so I go to the root. That negative two tells me it's going to bounce off. It looks like a parabola here. So at negative two, it goes down like a parabola. But it has to go back up because it crossed the next root at 0. So it goes through. No multiplicity, goes straight through. Same thing with the 1. It has to go back down, but it goes straight through because, again, there's no multiplicity. And x equals 3 goes through. Now, it's m3. Remember what m3 does. It looks cubic here. So it goes through, but it's going to flatten out at the 3 before it goes back up again. And that's what our graph will sort of look like. Number two, same thing. I get the type. Easy breezy. You can do this in your head. Look, x cubed. x squared. Just 2x. This becomes 2x to the 6. This is even positive. It looks just like you. <laughs> I kid myself. It's a parabola looking like thing. Okay, so it starts up, ends up. Getting the roots, very simple to do. Let each factor equal to 0. We get 3. It says m3. Negative 1, m2. And this gives us 3 halves. So there's our roots. Now we have to get the y-intercept. Let x be 0. Ah, negative 3 cubed. <coughs> 1 squared. Negative 3. Ooh, nasty. That's just basically negative 27 times negative 3, which is 81. So 0, 81 is our y-intercept. So if I sketch this now, doesn't have to be anything perfect. Graph your roots. x equals 3. It's m3, don't forget. Negative 1, m2, and there's 3 halves. Now, 
I don't have zero for my y-intercept, so I actually have to graph it, 81. So I graph my y-intercept as well. Now, remember the type. It's even positive. It looks, it looks like a parabola. That's what a parabola looks like, okay? So at the ends, it's going to be up and up at the end. So it's going to be up and up. So it starts up. But remember, it has to go to the root. A root says, where does it cross the x-axis? It says, I'm going to cross it at negative 1, but not only do I cross it at negative 1, but I bounce back up. Helps, helps me go to the 81. Doesn't have to be drawn the scale. Goes back through the 3 halves. And it has to go back up. Remember, it's cubic here. It has to go back up. Wiggle a little bit. Flattens out before it goes back up again. And there's our parabola. Starts up, ends up. Not our parabola, but it's our parabolic shape. Easy breezy. All right. I would like you to try number three at home tonight. But be careful. This is negative. It will affect our graph. Because I want to get to a problem like number four, where we have to factor. Now, we're going to deal a lot more with factoring problems tomorrow in class. But, or tonight's, for tonight's notes, tomorrow night's notes, whatever. So, we're going to take a look here. Now, this isn't factored. The first thing you have to make sure you do is factor it. This becomes x minus 2, x minus 1, and x plus 3 squared. And now I just do the same thing. Hey, baby, what's your type? This is x to the first, x to the first, x squared, x so to the fourth, if I add them all up. This is even positive. The best type because they're so happy. Look at the smile. Starts up, ends up. Get the roots. x equals 2. 1. Negative 3. M2. That's multiplicity of 2. Get the y-intercept. y intercept. Let x equal 0. I get negative 2, negative 1, 3 squared. That's what? 2 times 9, that's 18. So we get 0, 18. That's 18 right there, okay? And now I'm going to graph it. Now when you graph this equation, be careful. We get 2, 1, that's where they cross, right? And at negative 3, Label it, M2. I want to see those labels. And the 18, where does it cross the y-axis? It's even positive. Starts up, ends up. So when I graph it, it's going to be parabolic here. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll draw a parabola down here. It has to be a parabola here. So it starts up, goes through the 18. Now take a look here. Watch how I draw it. I don't know where it crosses at the 18. It could be on the way up, on the way down. 18 could be the top. I don't know, so I'll draw it going down this time. It's okay. You're not going to be perfect on these. It goes through the 1. Then it goes through the 2. No multiplicity on the 1 or 2. It goes up. And this function should look familiar to you. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, it is the world-famous Wernow function. All right. So let's take a look at the next page here. Number, uh, number 5. So what I would like you to do is try number 5 again. Again, be careful. It will be negative. And you do have to factor this. So I'll get you kind of started. We get t of x equals negative 1 fourth x to the fifth x plus 3 squared x plus 4 x minus 4. Ah, heck, I'm already in the mood. Let's do this one together. So we have to first get our zeros. Or, I mean, guess to get the type. Type, pretty easy to get. Ready? Negative 1 fourth x to the fifth x squared x, x. Ooh, bad movie. This is get negative 1 fourth x to the 1, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. Ah, this is odd negative. We know what odd negative looks like. It's a cubic, but it goes this way. So it starts up, ends up going down. The left is up, the right is down. Remember, that's my left hand behavior. That's our right hand behavior. Get the roots. Ooh, that's a tough one. Gives us zero, but it's m five. X equals negative three. That's m two, and I get negative four and positive four. Get the y-intercept. Now I will give you a hint here. If at any time your x-intercept is zero, guess what? Your y-intercept is also zero. Just a hint for you. And then I graph this. 
Easy breezy. There's zero. It's M5. Here's negative three. It's M2. Here's negative four. Here's four. Remember, my left goes down like a disco clown. My right goes up like a disco duck. And then I'm going to graph it. Crosses. No multiplicity. It crosses. At three, multiplicity. Bounces. Now, at five, there's multiplicity. This is odd. It's still going to be cubic. But remember what that five does to it. It flattens out way long. Longer than we normally would. Okay? And then it goes back up through the four. And there we go. It's like a roller coaster. Roller coaster of math. Oh, look, here we are on the roller coaster. Wee, hands up in the air. Okay. Ah, this is fun. All right. So how do we then write the equation of a polynomial? Now, we're going to do a lot of this stuff later on. But today, we're just going to do what we call generic formulas. These are my roots. So I'm saying my roots are 3 and negative 1. I'm just going to go backwards, okay? So if one of my roots is x equals 3 in the root form, in the factor form, that's what I want to do. It's going to be, I have to bring it over. I get x minus 3. If my root is x equals negative 1, the factor form, bringing it over, I get x plus 1. And I'm just going to multiply them together. x minus 3, x plus 1. And that's going to equal y. Now, notice I left some space. There's normally going to be a number here. We don't know what that number is yet, so we'll call it a. To find a, like what we did yesterday, we have to plug in another point. But there's our answer. Very easy to do. So let's go and try number 2. x equals 0. That just becomes just x. x equals negative 2. In factor form, that's x plus 2. x equals 1 becomes x minus 1. And I just multiply them together. A, don't forget your A, X, X plus 2, X minus 1. Don't be a hero. Don't multiply them out. You don't need to. Now, the one you do need to multiply them out to, though, is number 3. We'll talk about why that is in a second. So I get the root X equals 1 minus root 2. That, I have to bring over two of them. I get X minus 1 plus the square root of 2. The next one, x equals 1 plus the square root of 2. We get x minus 1 minus the square root of 2. The problem is when I multiply them together. I get y equals a, and I get this x minus 1 plus the square root of 2, and I get this x minus 1 minus the square root of 2. I don't like these square roots. So this is the only time you have to distribute with square roots. And it's not pretty, people. This becomes, because we're just doing cubics x cubed minus x minus x root 2 minus x plus 1 plus root 2. And I do this one. Plus root 2 times x minus root 2. And let's be careful, that's plus square root of 4 or minus square root of 4, which is just minus 2. And now I have to combine my like terms. y equals a. x cubed, nothing cancels with that. x is, ah, oh, there we are, minus 2x. Now, if you notice, these square roots of 2x's cancel. These square roots of 2's cancel. And I'm left with minus 1. And there's our answer. I would try number 3 again. And what I would like you to do is number 4. At home. I know these were a little bit longer, but trust me, hopefully this will clear up things and we'll clear up some questions tomorrow. All right, bye-bye.